we're Ben and Peter from Triple Jump, and this is Top 10 Boss Battles from Alex Kidd in Miracle World on the Sega Master System. What a ref... I normally hate your references, but yes, please. I'm down for... It's on um, PlayStation now. Is it now. really? Oh, yeah, I had a lovely night playing that other night. Sat there, didn't All you? the scoops here. Oh, yeah, all, all the scalps. Do you want some more scalps? Give us some scalps. More scalps. scalps. The bar is open. <laughs> Future WWE plans for The Fiend have been revealed. We have some troubling numbers from the WWE's quarter three earnings report. And we have an update on WWE's travel woes getting out of Saudi Arabia. We'll get to that soon. Right, spoiler chick. Wait, no, 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 no. You, you clicked on a video that says plans for the fiend revealed after Crown Jewel. I think it's implicit. We're about to talk spoilers from Crown Jewel. All right, so you've got a second now to pause this video. Seconds and, uh... over. He's the champion. Oh, He's the universal hey! champion. Hey! What a moment. The boy or dream came true for the fiend last night, and uh, we're looking ahead now to what happens next. I think the fiend winning the belt was probably. One of the only ways they could have salvaged the fiend at this point. To salvage the show entirely. You know, it was a weird show. It was yeah. it was a largely bad show, I would argue. And then the ending just made it okay. Everything was all right. And yeah, I, I didn't even care for the match that much. The the Rollins fiend match, I didn't think that much of it. But the result, tip good job. and indeed top. So what is next for the fiend? Well, uh, according to Dave Melter from the Wrestling Observer, he references the fact that during the broadcast, they mentioned on commentary that if Fiend wins the belt, he takes the belt to SmackDown because he's a SmackDown guy. Two titles, the two big titles yeah. on SmackDown now with Lesnar and Fiend. Old Smacky two belts, looking at you. Uh, so the plan would potentially be from here then to have a match with with the Fiend and a Raw superstar, probably Rollins, uh, to, to get the belt back onto the, the red brand. That's one of the ideas going forward. Absolutely, that's sort of reinforced by the fact that WWE is still advertising those steel cage matches. Uh, for uh, There's one for an upcoming episode of Raw, Rollins versus Fiend for the Universal title. Mm -hmm. They may still go with that. It may be a dark match, who knows? However, this is sort of contradicted by various reports that are floating around in the wrestling stratosphere. <laughs> that's a word for you. Nice. Uh, which are suggesting that the plan is to get Fiend back on Raw because if you remember back to the debut episode of WWE Backstage there, oh, was, a, there was a draft pick and Alexa and Nikki were drafted to SmackDown which means that Raw have one draft pick remaining Triple oh. H was very very clear about that they've apparently got a very big announcement coming up on an upcoming episode of Backstage 2 so the plan may be it's as simple as bringing him back via a draft pick. Yeah. Uh, at which point, yeah, he probably fused with Rollins again, doesn't he? Oh. Who would you put him with if he's going back to Raw? Which oh. you've got to believe is the case. They don't want two top belts on SmackDown. Lesnar's not going anywhere because that's where the money is. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, that's a great... I mean, I like the idea of, of mixing it up, maybe. I'm, I'm just... The problem is the heel side on Raw is, is quite thick. Because yes. you've got like someone like a Drew McIntyre could be an interesting match for, for The Fiend. But then, like that's, that's your, your heel boys on tour. There's Ricochet, but then I, I, I don't know whether I don't. Know, I'm intrigued to see how a Ricochet um, feed. I think you have to be somebody equally spoopy. And um, Taker, bring in a raw. Bring Taker, you Kane. Know what? I wouldn't be anti a Seth Rollins rematch or even lengthening the feud if Rollins goes heel at this point. And with some of the stuff that he said in recent interviews and his sort of general behaviour, I guess. A heel Rollins versus baby facey tweener heel, because he's not full heel, is he? He does heelish things for sure, but he's too bloody cool to be booed, that's for yeah. sure. And a heel Rollins versus baby face tweenery heel? I wouldn't be anti. I think that's intriguing. Mm. I don't what? want Rollins to come out on top there. What brand is Alistair Black on? Raw now. Well, there we go. Yeah, that's what people have been asking for for ages. Prepare the, prepare the good. Knock on his door and then <laughs> bury him, Fiend. He's new to the main roster. Get him shot. Heyman's a big fan of both The Fiend and Alistair Black. He was, uh, a while back, we talked about it on here that Paul Heyman was really lobbying to get Bray Wyatt onto Raw uh, as well as to have Alistair Black as part of Raw as well. So, I mean, Alistair, I mean, if The Fiend was in the ring being all, oh, I am a Fiendman, look at me being all. I'm a the, Fiendman? Look at me being all the spoopy. Ooh. He was in the ring, oh, look at me, gonna jump at you. Oh, here I come, here I come. And then, uh, 
up comes Black. Evil. And walks his way to the ring. That's all right. I like it. I'm going to be full on basic bitch here, but you've got to believe <laughs> that the Universal title is coming back to Raw simply because it's red. And they like that sort of color yeah. symbolism, don't they? they? They can't have the big red belt, the jam belt on SmackDown. That's <laughs> ridiculous. Belt. So whilst Vincent Mann was in Saudi Arabia, they had the small matter of the Halloween investors call. Just and a second. Wow. While, while he was in Saudi Arabia, I think he's still there, pal. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. He's out, he's out. I know he's out. More on that later. <laughs> we'll get there. Uh, but no, uh, he left George Barrios to deal with the uh, the, the rather trickle treaty numbers oh, from the <laughs> WWE's quarter. And here is Adam Petiti to go through some of those numbers now. What's this? I put my glasses on so I can read the numbers. Sorry, one moment. There we go. Now we're even. So, so Proper here, newsreader face for this. Hit us up with some of these numbers. Right, Joe, so. Joe. Uh, there was a 6.4 million operating income, which is down from 18.1 million. A massive, massive fall there. The network subscriber drop, 9%. Lots of network subscribers. They don't seem too concerned by this. I think the, they I, never do. They never do, but they are. They they might say they're not, but they absolutely are. They always try and sugarcoat it, of course. I think I think what the plan is is because they want to bring in this tiered system for um, for the network mm -hmm. that when they lower it like a basic package to like four ninety nine, then more people will be inclined to buy the network as opposed to buying the full fat version at a tenner. Sure. So yeah. I think there is that little bit of. Sort of co creature comfort that when they offer the, the, the cheap and cheerful, here's Raw, here's NXT, here's SmackDown, without like world class from 89, you're more doing, people will be inclined to buy it. You're doing their job for them there. You're sugar, really, you're sugar coating. <laughs> and that just shows that, you know, that 9% drop that fewer people are interested in the products. It's just a fundamental thing that people don't want to pay 9.99, which I think is a really good price for the amount of content that you get. Big drop there. Live event revenue declined to 23.2 million, which sounds like a big number. However, that is the gross income, not the net income. That doesn't cover profit because there is no profit. That is operating at a loss of $3.5 million. Live events, WWE house shows are now losing money. They're, that is nuts. But do you know what? I get it. I get it because, you know, both you and I know growing up when, when the wrestling rolled into town with the WWF, like it was a big deal because it didn't happen very often. But now, like, like there's so much going on in wrestling. There is so much wrestling to consume that, you know what, I could stay in and I could watch like some wrestling I want to watch. Or do I go to that weird part of the state I live in to watch Randy Orton? versus Ali in the main event. Like, well, that's it. There, there's a lack of star power, and I think fans are becoming increasingly aware over the past, well, a long time, that house shows, you're probably not gonna see anything of interest. The 24-7 title helps with that because there might be something a little bit unpredictable. You might see a title change, even if it's 24-7 title mm. change. Um, that adds something of value to the shows, but there's no big star power. There really, really isn't. Consumer products decreasing to 17 million down from uh, 19 .7. Six That's million. not a massive drop. It's a drop, but it's not like it's still ten percent, isn't it? Yeah, but it's. I mean, it's, it's. I mean, compared to some of these numbers, sure. Like that is that is kind of held steady in comparison. Yeah, Barrios uh, acknowledging for reviews for Two K Twenty were mixed. <laughs> well, well, I very very generous. I admire it? his honesty. They were very much mixed. He said as he clipped through the conference desk. Yeah, that's uh, that's not so much sugar coating as like <laughs> sugar slathering. <isn't laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of sugar on that one. Uh, he was asked about NXT's move from network to USA, continued uh, to the continued drive toward live rights. Um, a question was asked about Full Sail University and the expectation that NXT may be leaving Full Sail University. That didn't get answered, so that's it, it interesting. It looks like they're going to be, if not full time, then at least part time stepping away from Full Sail in 2020. Yep. Uh, Good news, and they expect that India TV deal to be done by the end of uh, 2019. Uh, so they're looking for a new deal there, which could in, uh, offer increased revenue. Um, and they said investors couldn't be guaranteed two Saudi Arabia shows per year going forward, which is interesting because that previous is, reports have mm. said that that's a 10 year deal with two shows per year every year. So that's interesting. We're going to do four. <laughs> No. No. <laughs> now, now, correct me if I am wrong, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you will in the comments. But like, I'm sure it was when they talked about the TV deal for the Middle East. Yes. That that was where the the um, the share price started to tank. Yes. Not tank, but full. Maybe tanks. Yeah, because they don't have anything fully lined up yet. So, well, it, it, no, I, I think tank is a fair word. Uh, 
The stock closed yesterday at $56 per share, which is down $10. That is a big, big drop. A big drop Green, indeed. Green, green. Uh, he was also asked about AEW. Barrios said that there's a lot of competition for eyeballs through all media and sports entities. Their expectation is they're going to win. They're going to win. They're going to win it's all that entertainment. <laughs> it's that simple. They're, yeah, they're going to beat bloody what Jersey Shore. And what else is on TV? Fraser on Channel talent. 4 in yeah. the morning. <laughs> you ain't beating Fraser on Channel 4 in the morning. Not a good day. Not a good day for WWE yesterday. But hey, Fiend's the jam belt champ. <laughs> <laughs> so an update on some of the travel woes that the WWE guys have had since uh, the end of Crown Jewel last night. The plan was to be back in the US in time for SmackDown. Uh, 17 hours. At one point it was like there were 17 hours uh, b between now and SmackDown. The flight was 13 hours. It was looking pretty icy, looking pretty dicey. We do have an update. That's right. So uh, there are a few names which have been confirmed as being out of Saudi Arabia. They managed to get their own flights back. Uh, those names are Vince McMahon, Brock Lesnar, and Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Thank the Lord Thank the Hogan's goodness. out of there. Jesus Christ. Hogan Lesnar for SmackDown tonight. Uh, there's been an update on the reason that this may have happened as well. Uh, this comes from unconfirmed reports via Fightful. Um, saying that there were rumours among talent that Vince McMahon got in, in some kind of disagreement in Saudi Arabia with Saudi Arabia authorities. I, um, I mean, I, I don't know what to say about that. I don't think Vince would be so crazy to... Do, yes, he would. Yes, he would. How, <laughs> he would know what am I talking about? How furious. And, and it goes on to the next part of the story, uh, which, which is a very, very recent update, which is that PW Insider have reported the majority of those delayed leaving Saudi Arabia for tonight's SmackDown won't make it and they're now been put in hotels for the night. Uh, WWE have made arrangements to try and get these, get the most absolutely necessary guys out. So your Titus O'Neils, your Drake mm -hmm. Mavericks. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of people in the WWE very upset about this situation. If, the, if what, what we've heard is true, that Vince McMahon upset authorities, how furious would you be to be watching Vince's private jet leave? <laughs> See you later, suckers! <laughs> I'm going to Nando's! You'd be furious if that was the case. You really, really would. SmackDown is going to be fascinating tonight. I don't know what to make of it. To be honest, this is a better sell as far as I'm concerned than, say, the tag titles are on the line tonight. Maybe. It's the Revival versus the New Day. I don't care. I want to see what happens on SmackDown because it's a pissing mess. This, yes, please. This is the Icelandic ash cloud all yes, over again, yeah. isn't it? Oh, I forgot about Only that. Only slightly more aggressive. Uh, <laughs> we'll obviously keep you updated with everything uh, regarding this, this, this ever-moving story. Uh, uh, here at Cultaholic at cultaholic.com and here on our YouTube channel as well. We'll do our best to keep you up to date. We certainly will. See you in a bit. Love you, bye. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section down below. You can support us on Patreon by going to patreon.com forward slash cultaholic. Lastly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.